Hey, way in the future, FF here. So what you're about to watch here was shot in the summer, autumn of 2022, and uh, I'm editing this uh, in the summer of 2023. Even though I've been working on this project for about a year and I, I still haven't found any schematics or drawings or service manuals for the LCAT at all. I have a partial manual for the original Subaru Sambar uh, van base, but nothing for the actual LCAT conversion. So if you have any clues as to where I might get my hands on that, I'd be very interested in finding that out. Thank you and enjoy the show. I have no proper narrative for this video piece, but these should be the cell modules going into the Elka there in the darkness. So these are six Tesla Model S batteries from 2014. Uh, one is slightly uh, liquid damage due to uh, internal leakage of a pack uh, due to Tesla, not us actually. Uh, so we're going to have to see how that guy does. It's got one cell that looks really sad, uh, but all in all, I'm excited. This is the battery compartment of my LCAT, and it's uh, 112 centimeters across and exactly 72 centimeters deep. And uh, this is a percentage of a Tesla uh, Model S battery box, which is less than 110 centimeters wide but more than 72 centimeters deep. So we're gonna have to get to cutting because I want to fit this into the LCAT and I think we can just about do it. So I'm gonna have to really cut this down. Now I know the battery modules, uh, they uh, do not reach all the way to this edge because there's a metal uh, bus bar thing which goes here so there's a long uh, this uh, groove, there's uh, metal filling, uh, and the bottom modules uh, end right before that. So basically, this is uh, the absolute limit of a battery module. Uh, the cooling hoses go in the back, and uh, they're fairly fixed because when you uh, have a module, so they bolt into these, uh, they can't move back and forth. Uh, so we have quite a bit of superfluous fluff on this. Uh, this entire back side can go away. Uh, I will need uh, this because I want to stack these two on top of each other, uh, but uh, this stuff, it will have to go. It's simply too deep. It will not fit. Uh, so we're going to have to see how well we can actually make that happen. Uh, worst case, I'll have to actually cut uh, this entire section off and simply rely on the vertical uh, braces to stack, uh, provide a mechanical support for stacking these. Uh, there's actually a metal uh, extension which goes on top of that uh, so that you will have load carrying capacity. And we have that on these. So these go on top of those ridges and well, I might as well just show you. They go on top roughly like that. So these will, uh, when this isn't bent to hell, uh, this will mate and uh, You'll have the module squeezed in between uh, and you'll have mechanical vertical stability provided through these uh, members here. So we don't really need the back end of this, uh, but uh, we will need uh, the uh, case itself because the Tesla modules, the cell modules, they're quite uh, fragile little things. Well, you don't want to have them just loosely stacked on top of each other, at least not if you're building a tower. So the plan right now is to just uh, get uh, uh, the uh, uh, sawzall and uh, try and chew away at this as much as possible and uh, then <laughs> we'll just see if it'll fit. Uh, I considered keeping uh, this little pocket in the end here. This is where the original Tesla BMS used to go. Uh, this is just going to make it annoying. I won't be able to center everything so uh, this is also going to get swinged off. Well, it turns out trying to cut a thick aluminium with the cheapest Lidl uh, Zorzol from uh, 20 years ago, probably, isn't the best idea. 
it didn't go very well because there's too much slop in uh, the gearbox and it was spitting bearing pieces at me uh, towards the end before it seized up completely. So I had to go out, buy a proper one and now we can actually get to work. So the plan right now is to cut uh, this section off uh, right at the edge of this weld because that's where uh, the materials were thinnest. We'll have to sort of work our way through this stuff uh, but I don't think that's going to be too difficult a task. This is just some plastic gunk they've put in that. Also uh, this entire uh, bar as much as I can get off is gonna have to go uh, because this will just not fit in the battery compartment as it is so we're probably gonna have to uh, just cut this all the way across through all this uh, annoyingly thick material but oh well. All right and that's our uh, battery case cut to size uh, as good as I can get it. Uh, so I did have to chop off uh, quite a bit more than I thought uh, because uh, the limiting factor is our depth. We really have an absolute maximum depth of uh, uh, 72 centimeters. I've gotten this down to uh, 72.5, 0.8 a bit depending on which part of the uneven cut you're on. Uh, so if this doesn't fit well enough uh, we're gonna have to get rid of uh, every rear end here uh, but uh, I, I really would like to keep this for the mechanical support. Uh, let's uh, clear out the back of the Alcat and see if we can drop that in. It's gonna be very very close and alas even though this looks good on the surface uh, it does not fit. Uh, you can see we have that little tiny edge in the back corner there that's uh, grabbing on and uh, that's just uh, uh, not gonna do it. There's no reasonable way for me to cut away uh, at that little bit of corner there and I don't think I have any real way of uh, decreasing the size of this in uh, that end either. Uh, so I would like to leave this plastic alone if at all possible. Uh, I could also raise this up a bit with just some uh, bars across the bottom there but that uh, it cuts into our height and while we do have a decent amount of height uh, all of this stuff goes on top of there so we have we should have enough uh, vertical space to uh, do this I haven't actually measured I'm just sort of taking it for granted another day dawns and uh, I figured out it's really easy to just uh, uh, lift the battery uh, holder uh, out of the LCAT and uh, we can really see uh, part of why I bought this particular LCAT because this has been underneath a bunch of lead acid batteries and look at how clean this is. There's no sign, well maybe there's been a bit of a splash there but there's really no sign of damage, no sign of anything. Uh, the biggest issue we have is uh, there's uh, just a tad of crap hanging out in the corner there uh, which uh, might uh, impede airflow so I'm going to clean this all out. Uh, so the way this is constructed is this is a custom glass fibre tray uh, which is uh, bolted into the vehicle I'm going to guess through these large bolts here and the battery then straps into these large steel holders by the sides. Uh, so I'm just going to clean this out now just to, because I have it out because my plan uh, is since, since, since it's fairly it's a fairly convoluted process actually getting the uh, a battery case in and out of that door uh, it's much easier to just have uh, the entire battery box uh, sitting loosely on the floor so I can test fit stuff. Alright so I've now given up on the uh, hope of actually fitting uh, the Tesla case all the way down inside the LCAT's plastic uh, casing so instead I've dug up some 2.5 centimeter square uh, steel uh, profiles and I've cut a few lengths here, uh, just three of them thus far to see if it'll fit and uh, the ridge around the edge here, that guy there, uh, is it, just about uh, 25 centimeters. so these 25 centimeter profiles they raise the entire chassis up uh, just to, enough to clear the edge, it's, oh yeah we have a little brace down here so it's actually touching 
there. This should actually be... This is actually <laughs> extremely well fitted. There is almost no play in this. So, yeah, we have it resting up against the edge here, which is fine because these traps which hold the battery in, they come through here, so we have plenty of space there. Uh, so, uh, this is actually beautiful. Uh, and since this gets a bit wider the further up you go, you don't have the ridge uh, uh, width constraint. Uh, I can cut the top module to be just a bit uh, wider if I want to. Uh, curious thing I noticed about this entire case assembly is it's actually insulated. You can see uh, they've filled the plastic with uh, expanding foam. Uh, so, this is actually foam filled. It's fairly solid and uh, that actually uh, makes this a pretty good uh, thermal control system. Uh, the top I don't think is insulated. Hang on, it actually might be. Oh yeah, the top is insulated as well. You can see the foam in there. So this entire thing is an insulated, a thermally controlled battery box. I, I was not expecting that. I thought was, this was all just a uh, fairly thin plastic construction with nothing but uh, it's double walled and uh, insulated. So yeah, this is this is probably better R value than many um, modern American houses. Ha! Alright, and that's battery box number two. Pretty much as cut as it needs to be. I am very curious to see if we stack this on top of that one, if uh, the top case of a battery case uh, is uh, gonna go on properly. So we, we don't get quite our final height since the uh, top case adds a bit, you know, a centimeter or so of height if we really stretch it. But I wanna see if we have a chance. Let's do it. Yep, and I don't even need to get the top case on because I can see right away that this is gonna fit with uh, a considerable margin. Uh, so we have about uh, seven centimeters from this gasket uh, to the top of a module. So even if we call that eight, because we must get uh, some extra chunk from the uh, top case, uh, that's uh, only about two thirds of the uh, 13 centimeters of height we have available inside. So I've ventured up on the magical second story of a barn uh, and I figured I'd pull a proper Sormalainen because our country is basically made out of forest and I have uh, this absolutely gorgeous uh, piece of wood which is probably intended to be uh, the eight side panelling uh, for the barn. Uh, the stuff you can see right there uh, but it's uh, it's slightly flawed, it's cracked in the end there, so they just never used it to actually make a barn. They just shoved it on the second floor uh, for storage indefinitely instead. Uh, and uh, this is roughly the sort of aspect ratio I want for the floor of this box. Uh, it's uh, about 2.5 centimeters thick uh, and um, endlessly long. It's a beautiful piece of wood. I actually hate cutting it up, but it's never going to be used for anything else. Uh, and uh, quite wide. In fact, very wide, uh, wide to the point where you can basically not buy wood of this aspect anymore because they just don't grow trees old enough to get this large. So this has been some ancient, magnificent tree before it got cut down to build the barn. Uh, so I'm gonna cut uh, probably three pieces of this and put it in the bottom of a box to spread out the load uh, from the Tesla battery boxes. All right, so I finally have the big box of the Tesla battery case parts. So uh, that means I have the screws for bolting the lid on and uh, all the battery jumpers and uh, random bits and bobs are required to uh, assemble the batteries, including these things, which I think we might have some use for. Uh, so with that, we can finally start thinking about actually building uh, the battery boxes. What I think I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna basically build a tower of two boxes on top of each other uh, with uh, the metal uh, a case on both. Uh, so we need to cut this uh, top section in half because 
it's uh, sort of folded up. It it's uh, two pieces. It's uh, supposed to be flat, uh, which uh, that would be the width of a Tesla. Uh, but since we're obviously just using half battery with a battery box widths, uh, we need to uh, cut this off. So I think I'm gonna cut it. Probably just gonna be stopping and do it like right along the middle there will be so so. Uh, cut off a little wing there, that's uh, unnecessary. And uh, then we'll see about trying to bolt this into the case uh, uh, to straighten it because uh, I think uh, these take a, a beating when you disassemble them. You, you, you just, it is really difficult to get them uh, apart uh, in good looking order without having a shop really specializing in that. And uh, quite a bit of uh, uh, cutting, sawing, grinding and uh, beating with wooden sticks. Uh, we have something starting to resemble uh, a free module a Tesla battery box. So now comes the question of stacking, uh, which is uh, a bit trickier than uh, you might initially think, because uh, the Tesla battery boxes have these uh, uh, rails for added rigidity. Uh, underneath there's uh, three of them and uh, that's just not gonna play with this thin metal lid. Uh, if uh, Since uh, the LCAT secures the batteries by uh, clamping them together that it just presses everything down into the floor, uh, having those there is just gonna cause three dents uh, in uh, the uh, metal case and it's gonna put all the load actually down on the battery modules and that's something we very much do not want. Uh, so, I have just emptied, I don't know how many batteries on that thing and that thing, and I have removed those rails uh, from the bottom of the top case, as well as cleaning up a bit of uh, the welds they've done to secure uh, these rails uh, in place. So this box now actually has a flush bottom. I'm gonna wipe it down and clean it up a bit. Uh, and this is going to sit nice and flush on top of the other battery and it also gains its about a better part of a centimeter of clearance height wise which is always welcome in this uh, fairly tight application. All right and there we have the uh, second box uh, uh, top lid reasonably. Uh, even day to uh, just to do the same thing. I bashed it with a, a stick and then I used uh, uh, the SDS to sort of even out these uh, terrible uh, marks that it got with because we disassembled with, with an SDS as well, just going burrrt. Uh, so it's got some uh, more marks than the other one, which was all handmade, but that panned out fine. Then I used uh, just a hammerhead to sort of bash uh, the final little dents out. Now, uh, today, I had a bit of an epiphany about how to mount these, uh, the top and bottom module together. Uh, because we have uh, these original uh, Tesla uh, vehicle mounting alignment pins. Uh, these uh, made up with uh, some alignment pins uh, from a vehicle and go ka-chunk and then you bolt uh, uh, the battery in through the bottom of these. There's a hole through them and uh, you can fit an M10 bolt through that, absolutely fine. So you can do that, and it's a really good fit. Uh, it's uh, quite tight, it can barely move around at all. Uh, so, I got the idea, what if we take the crimp tool to this, this is just aluminium, around the bolt to make it threaded. And that's just what I did on this test piece here. Uh, you can see I've taken the crimp tool to it uh, with a bolt inside and uh, it, you can't see the inside uh, but the result is that we can, it's not a good thread, but we can with minimal effort make something which will thread in an M10 bolt. Uh, so my plan right now is to use these uh, original uh, unmodified in the top case and then I'm going to take some of the threaded ones, or rather make some more threaded ones, put them in the bottom case, uh, and uh, cut the heads off. Uh, so since I want the top of the bottom case to be flush, I can't have this because all the weight of the entire pack would end up leaning 
just on this. Uh, but if I uh, bolt them into uh, the case and then just swing the top off, we can get a flush mount uh, where we can just uh, basically just bolt the packs on uh, onto each other with uh, three large bolts. Uh, it, it's not going to be super tight, but it really does not need to because they're going to be pressure uh, fit anyway uh, because of the straps. Uh, this is just to make sure they don't slide around individually on top of each other. Uh, and we can achieve, I, I think, a really, really good mount uh, with this met method. So I'm just going to uh, crimp up uh, two more of these uh, and uh, install them in uh, the bottom box. Oh man, that almost looks pretty, doesn't it? Come apart party. So I'm going to install them here, just uh, screw them in as far as they'll go, and then I'll uh, take uh, probably the, jig the uh, sawzall and just shring that off so we end up with essentially a threaded insert right underneath uh, this hole here. So then I can just uh, stack the two boxes on top of each other, run the bolts through, and voila! Really rigidly mounted, bolted together uh, battery boxes with no fuss at all. Uh, and it's e even going to play beautiful because uh, everything's going to be flush. Uh, well, except for the screw heads here, I guess I have no plan for that. So I'm going to have to put like a slight amount of padding uh, between them. Might use some of the uh, uh, Tesla uh, battery insulation stuff. I have a huge amount of this. This is just garbage, basically. Otherwise, uh, this is roughly the thickness of uh, a uh, battery uh, screw head. So I'll just put a sheet of that in between, uh, bolt them together uh, and uh, be done with it. Now that's uh, way in the future, that's after we've mounted everything in the vehicle, after we've put the cell modules into the bottom box, plumbed them up, wired them up and then put the lid on. So we're really looking ahead uh, when doing this, but I am mm, so happy that I figured that out. Okay, so uh, now we've reached a stage in the mechanical design, design cobbling, uh, where I'm actually comfortable to do a test fit. So uh, we have a couple of uh, cell modules there and uh, uh, we need to start working on uh, all the uh, wiring, at least figure out a basic wiring design for this thing. Uh, so. It's going to be a bit tricky. There are a few problems we need to figure out. So number one is uh, the uh, two jumpers on each uh, level, which go between uh, the modules. Uh, I thought I was going to be able to just recycle a bunch of the Tesla uh, jumpers, but sadly, uh, while there are some, this particular one fits perfectly. Uh, there's only one of those per pack, I think or two in a pack and I don't have all of them. Uh, but uh, the gist of it is, is I have two of those uh, and uh, we need four. So I'm gonna uh, manufacture from one of these other bus bars uh, just a couple of copies of these out if uh, hard uh, copper. These are just uh, uh, plated copper bus bars, perfectly suitable for the application. Well, if that's not a thing of beauty, contact a bus bar version. 0.1. So uh, all I did was to uh, take uh, one of these uh, very plentiful uh, sort of weird bus bars which are fairly worthless in this application and cut it off right about there and gave it a bend uh, to just uh, loop it around onto the contactor. So uh, now we can just uh, drill a couple of uh, holes, uh, tap them with M6 uh, bolt thread and uh, basically we can just put each contactor on the side of a battery case right there. It works out beautifully with uh, the height of this thing. The bolt should be right, best just going into this cavity so no risk of uh, puncturing the cell. We have plenty of space there uh, and uh, by mounting them like this we can get essentially both contactors uh, right on top of each other. Then we can take another piece of bus bar jumper it between the secondary side of the contactors and put a, a bolt hole in the middle of that, like they're going to be something like that apart, I think. So we have plenty of space to put a bolt hole uh, right in between them, uh, where we can uh, just uh, tap off uh, 
a power to go to the other side of the battery, hopefully through that cable, but uh, we'll see. This is a much tidier solution than I actually uh, thought I was going to figure out. I was planning on just uh, bolting the contactors onto the wood somewhere around there in the final case, but this is just going to be mm, beautiful. Boom! We've become a double-decker battery. So uh, this is uh, uh, the first real test mount of both uh, uh, levels of uh, the case uh, and it's really turned out excellent. So there's been quite a bit of work gone, uh, gone into stumbling over battery jumpers uh, into uh, making this work. Uh, so I have cut out some of the uh, Tesla uh, battery pack insulation -y stuff, shoved it in there and I've also I used some uh, just uh, yoga mat uh, cutouts on these deeper parts just to allow for a bit more pressure on these actual uh, vertical, uh, vertical strengthening bars. Uh, and uh, it's come together beautifully. I've got it sort of semi put together. You can see I have uh, these uh, aluminium brackets shoved in between there. That's because uh, the cell modules, which we've indeed uh, got there, uh, uh, the, the, they move between the top and bottom parts, so there's a bit of extra spacing there, uh, so you can't just uh, bolt it together without the cell module if you want to check spacings and such, uh, and uh, I want to do that so everything has to be the correct height. The uh, uh, bolt through system is working beautifully. Uh, you can talk this down really not super hard, I don't think I haven't tried the limit, I don't want to break them, but as hard as I want to. Uh, you can feel the uh, uh, soft stuff compressing a bit, and you can uh, sort of uh, make out that uh, the metal is uh, kind of coming to rest uh, on top of the uh, lower cell there, which is roughly what you want. Uh, they have this uh, insulating thing there, which uh, it can take a decent bit of pressure, so uh, I'm very happy with that. Uh, now, the next project, which is giving me a bit of a headache, is uh, how to actually do uh, the parallel connection. Uh, because uh, since we have basically a soft layer between the cell modules, we need to have some slop in the jumper that goes uh, between the two stories, uh, because uh, th this is where they're going to parallel together. You have individual strings coming in there, through the contactors, then they go parallel and out to the uh, vehicle. Uh, and uh, we, we can't just take uh, like uh, a jumper and uh, bolt it on there, because that's really setting us up for uh, problems in the future when uh, stuff bumps around, it, these are going to move uh, against each other ever so slightly, it's just going to get all loose and brittle and we might break the contact just over years and it, it, it's just ugly, so we need a flex there. Alright, so I've decided again to solve a fancy a hard metal work because it's, 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 it's just uh, not very suitable for this particular application, so as you can see uh, we're just doing uh, bog standard crimped uh, copper wires. Uh, so, there's uh, st still a bit of uh, thought going into the selection of this wire. Uh, this is a fairly hard uh, plastic uh, wire, uh, which uh, will maintain its shape uh, quite well, and it's it's not floppy at all, uh, so it's fairly stiff, and it's uh, not going to want to uh, jiggle around a lot. Uh, and uh, this is going to be the main jumper, which uh, goes on over to the other side of a pack and uh, connect to the vehicle and uh, you might notice that the original LCAT wire is still lying here in its original configuration uh, that's because I've used uh, a leftover piece of 70 square mil wire from uh, the big solar system install uh, so this is just gonna cross the battery uh, underneath since we don't have a fuse uh, in this I can just pull it underneath uh, between uh, uh, these two uh, pieces of wood and take it out around here somewhere. So we're going to get both a positive and negative terminal roughly in that area of the battery, which should be fairly well suited for uh, where the original LCAT uh, battery connector wiring actually reaches. So that's going to work out to quite enough favour. 
Would you look at that? So, uh, today's project has been uh, cleaning up and putting the uh, battery lower box uh, back into the LCAT. Uh, and you can see how the battery wiring is going to come in from the vehicle there. Our terminals are going to be up in this end here. And uh, we have this uh, forklift power plug, which should have enough slack to reach all the way to the corner where both our terminals are going to be. Uh, so, uh, contactors are going to go on this side and the fat wire is going to go all the way across there uh, and there's going to be a final jumper in for the negative end there uh, and uh, that's really it as far as the vehicle to uh, battery wiring is concerned uh, the vehicle does have uh, uh, this which was hooked up to 12 volts in uh, the big pack like you had uh, a bunch of six volt batteries and this was on number one two so this got 12 volts high voltage battery into it. Uh, I have no idea what it does. It seems to work fine without it. So that's a, a pro problem for the future. Uh, but yeah, we're really starting to get close uh, to something which will actually run and drive. I could technically just uh, put the batteries in there and with a few crimps of the fat wiring, uh, we could get this thing rolling. Very exciting. 